Okay, people, how are we doing out there? First things first. My name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambulite Rejection Screen Paint using Ambulite Rejection. Yeah, kind of like the game. Man, yesterday was interesting because uh, a lot of friends and, and people chimed in yesterday, which was really cool and all people wishing happy birthday. But to me, it's like another day. So all I did was yesterday was just basically do nothing. Like that was play some games, watch a couple of movies. I never saw Hitman. Like I had it on my uh, hard drive for the longest time and never ever watched it. But I loved it. I downloaded the rest of the series. I think there's a few more I haven't seen yet. All right, so um, we are going to be doing an early launch on uh, the um, Supreme Black Silver um, Ambulance Rejection Roll-On. Shopping carts were activated about a half an hour ago. Um, it just took me a while because I had some things I had to take care of first before I actually got on here and started talking about it. So that is available now. It already passed the the uh, thousand lumen um, um, test with flying colors, so there's no point in just waiting. Just we just launched it ahead of time. Uh, I had people all day long on Facebook that were asking us when was it coming out, when we're going to release it, and I said if it passes the test, we'll release it early, which we did. So it's available on the website. One quart is eighty nine dollars, and two quarts one hundred forty two dollars. And as you've seen from the demonstration, it is quite impressive for a gray screen. All right, so today. I'm in here mounting the Chrissies, getting them ready. And the one projector I'm more concerned about of mounting is the 505 because the 505 is a freaking huge projector. It is big. It's way bigger than any other projectors that I have here. So um, I have an interesting way of actually building my, uh, my mounts for my projectors. Keep in mind, the traditional projectors, the ones you have to use that don't have lens shift, um, those projectors usually have to be mounted to the ceiling and it had that bit of a, you have to tilt the projector and then you have to keystone it into the screen. These projectors have lens shift, so they don't require that. You can set it right on top of a shelf and I don't have to worry about the ceiling fan. The ceiling fan is not going to get in the way because it's going to allow it to be able to bring it down. Uh, yeah, I don't have time for that. Lawyers are involved in that now, so uh, no, sir, they're not. When I in here talking about programs, I'm about something else, change the subject or be blocked. All right, so we're already past all that already. Now you guys want to shake hands when I come up with a great screen paint that's more superior to yours. No, no, we were already in the backyard now. We're going to start experimenting in that field anyway. So uh, that's already a done deal. I think a lot of people are shook over that technology because that technology is doing things that other gray screens can't do. And it can't. You've seen, you've seen the results of that technology. And keep in mind, that's just the stuff we're showing you. We haven't showed you the other tests of what that stuff has the ability to be able to do. So you're just seeing layers of the light end of the technology, which we all see is quite impressive. You haven't seen the other half of what it does. And keep in mind, as I said before, just because I show you things doesn't mean I show you everything. There's stuff I'm working on. You have no idea what I'm working on. You think that stuff is impressive? I got things I'm working on, man, that are way beyond that technology. So trust me, when we say that we are now entering the area of gray screens, where we're going to actually output, we're going to design products that would put the majority of these gray screens, actually all of them, to shame. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Now that we know that we can develop a gray screen that pulls black technology, can produce black contrast levels, and has the ability to be able to, um, what's the word for it, um, produce images outside like a black screen. But, as I said before, it's not close to anything when it comes to black technology. Contrast difference, because gray screens can't pull contrast. Even with the high-tech technology we developed under black silver, even though it pulls up an impressive black levels outside, and it did a star field. That screen pulled a star field outside. 1,000 lumens on a projector that has a zero contrast rating. Think about that one. That's quite impressive. Even that's you know, I'm, even I'm shocked by it. That it was able to do that. So, no, we're not going to shake hands. No, we're not going to bury the hatchet. Uh, we're way past that now. I mean, all the other stuff, taking my product down to Home Depot and trying to make it, uh, the slander and all that stuff, we're way beyond that now. We, there's lawyers involved in this now. So that's don't bring it up, okay? So if you bring it up again, I'll block you, okay? All right, let's get back to this so you understand. 
Now everybody wants to be peaceful now that we're basically designing ultimate grade technology. No. I have, like I told you before, and get an understanding on this, crystal clear, Crow Boys. I'm not interested in screen paints. Those are small ponds for me. My sites are set for the big companies, Black Diamond, DMP Supernova, Elite Screens, Daylight Screens. That's where I'm pinpointed at. I couldn't care less about the bottom fish. It's not my concern. We know what our technology is capable of doing. We're not concerned about that. We want the big fish. That's what we're after. We're not interested in that, so we don't care. But like I said, unfortunately, when we developed that technology, as I said before, crystal clear, it was never meant for front projection. It was rear technology only. So if you sprayed it on glass, that's what it was designed for, a form of invisible technology to allow people to advertise on glass or rear projection screen. It was done in a live stream that I decided to paint it on a front projection screen when showing off the formula. And when I was painting the screen, I clearly said, you can watch the video, I don't know about this, it's a great screen, it's not gonna pull contrast, it's not gonna pop, I don't even know why I'm doing this. And sure enough, that screen reacted differently, differently than anything we ever designed when it comes to gray screens. So we consider it because it's a gray screen, black technology will always be more superior because it can produce 100% contrast. And that's the way it is. But we consider it to be mid-class. Oh, by the way, if you go on the website and you see something that says class rating, this is how we're rating our technology now. So since we have a gray screen, they're called mid-class screens, which means it's kind of like, uh, we call it, um, kind of like a medium flagship capability. So if you put it that way, like how Elite has those categories where you had your gray screens and you had your darker screens, the gray screens are a little bit more cheaper where the darker screens are a little more expensive. So that's where we have it in our categories. When you come and see the black or the Eclipse, um, Platinum Eclipse or anything else you see, those are catered towards saying they're high class screens, okay? So I'm just gonna have mid class and high class. We never wanna put out a white screen, so that would be low class. We never would do that to begin with. There's no purpose in that at all. But yeah, that technology is quite impressive. Quite impressive. So, like I said, don't talk about burying the hatchet and all that stuff like that. I don't wanna hear about that at all, period. Don't bring that conversation up. I don't wanna hear about it at all, period. You have plenty enough time to basically turn the other cheek. And now that we have a gray screen that's producing levels of technology that he can't understand or anyone else can understand, we're already set to go. That's it. I have contracts. People automatically already issuing contracts for that technology. So I'm getting mad over it now. Everybody wants to bring out the peaceful hand when you start bringing out the bigger warships. And that's how it is. When it's warship to warship, Everybody wants to throw, throw, um, throw ammunition back and forth. When you bring out a bigger and badder warship, everybody wants to shake hands. But that, we're not about that. All right, so today I'm mounting the Chrissy. Oh, man. This is why, again. All right, we got to go. Goodbye. I keep warning people and they don't listen. I don't have time for that nonsense. Bye-bye. All right, so let's move on from there. Now. We're mounting the Chrissy today, the big boy. I don't have much concern about the smaller projectors like this Chrissy right here. This is a big, a big projector. It's not hard to mount, they're not that heavy, but that one on the floor is something else. And my biggest concern is that thing ripping off from the wall and crashing onto the floor and me losing $500 on a projector. And like I said, I got it from a merchant who had 12 of them. He doesn't have any more left, but he had 12 of them. Anybody else I go to, it's gonna cost me a grand and up to get another one of these projectors. And this projector is freaking amazing. All right, so I had to enforce, I know it's a bit of a sloppy ghetto job, but it works. And I'll figure out some way to dress it up to make it a little bit better, to hide all that, to make it much better. But I'll show you what I had to go through to mount this thing to make sure it stays up there and doesn't come off the wall. I had to put reinforced brackets, heavy brackets on the bottom, brackets up on the top and mount them there. All this is gonna be hidden really nice. I'm gonna have this all camouflaged very nice. So basically it looks real nice in the room. So basically, I thought it'd be better. Most people, when they mount or put a shelf up, they only put the shelves at the top. That's a bad idea because what's going to happen is it puts more pressure at the screws at the top. And as the screen projector slowly moves, it can be slowly moving, it could pull out from the wall. It's using galvalizing screws. But what I did was I put brackets at the bottom, which means even if it pushes down, it's still locked in place. And just to make sure they don't pull out, I put extra brackets across with long galvanized screws. That thing's not going anywhere at all, period. 
So how I tested it is because I have two of these projectors right here. This is the one that works. That's the one I got. The guy stole my money on eBay, but I got my money back and I was able to buy that one right there. The reason why that one's still here, because we all know if you do a chargeback or a credit card gets involved in this, it takes 90 days. So that's going to be here for 90 days. He won't get his projector for 90 days. But meanwhile, PayPal was nice to get my money back so I can buy another one. Should have never sold me a broken projector to begin with. But I used that instead of sticking my other projector to see how much weight they can take in. So the new method of basically putting brackets on the top and the bottom works out absolutely fantastic because like I said, when you put a heavy projector down there, those screws may start to pull out as that projector starts to lean down. Can't lean down because there's brackets at the bottom of it too. So it holds up pretty well. So one of the things I'm gonna tell you, let me pick this one up real quick. So like I said, it works out fantastic. Now, for those who may be thinking, well, Ken, hey, you know, your projector is not going to hit your screen correctly because it's um, it's sitting straight, has to be on a slant. These are lens shift projectors. Lens shifts don't require to have you sit there and tilt your screen or trying to figure out a position in place. I can stick that projector right there and I can actually shift my screen to fit right in that little spot with no problem. That's why I'm obsessed with lens shift. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the giant Chrissy and we're gonna put it up there. Now what I'm about to do is because I don't feel like going back and forth to change everything, I'm gonna run every cable that I need to run out of the back of that projector, bring it up from the back and put it into a conjunction box. So I can plug everything up from there instead of going up in there. And the beautiful thing about the lens shift, what I like about this projector is the lens shift, it, all of it is all powered by the remote control, which means I don't have to touch anything on the top of that projector. All right, so let's get this monster up there. Right now to test it, I have my Chromecast running through the back of it to test it out. Ugh, it is a heavy one. And I had to put on a little lip at the end because for some reason when the projector came over, it was a little too, uh, a little too big. Let's see, we've got everything back here. Oh, we got everything going good. Yeah, I needed to put that piece there because it was just a little bit tilted over, so. That's right, so it doesn't go anywhere. Make sure we're not hitting anything on there. All right, so there is a projector sitting right there. Now, when I first turned it on, it hit the ceiling fan, hit the ceiling. I'm thinking, oh crap, it may be too high, but this, these are different. These, when you work with certain, okay, this lens shift right here will let you go to a certain degree. So you got a certain degree on how far you can go up and side to side. Those right there, don't. I can bring it all the way down to the floor if I wanted to. So, let's turn on the projector. I think <coughs> I left my remote control. Yep, in there. All right, let's move on. All right, so we got a remote control. Of course, I'm gonna be operating picture and picture on here, because picture and picture on a projector is freaking amazing. So, I'll be able to run like Netflix. My, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm actually picking up the, today. They got it for pre order I picked up two of the um, Amazon Fire Stick with the Echo that you can talk and everything. I'm picking one for up here because I'm gonna run one up through here and one downstairs because right now my PS4 is gonna come up here. Once I get the um, chair, the chair should be in about two more days. So that'll be up here. And then downstairs, I need something down there. So I'm gonna put the Echo down there and I'm gonna pair that with the, um, the, um, the, um, what is it? The, uh, I forgot that woman's name, that crazy, the Echo, uh, it'll come to me later, whatever. All right, so let's uh, power this on. Sounds like the Death Star going from 5,000 lumens. When I hit it, like I said, when I first hit it, it nailed the ceiling and everything. I was like, this is, this is insane. You hear that clicking in the back? Chrissy's automatically adjust focus from the door. And the weird, funny thing about it, I noticed that every time like a frame shot would change, I would hear that clicking noise. So every time anything changes on the screen, that projector is constantly focusing the image so it stays perfect. So it's gonna count down, after it counts down, it's gonna sync to whatever connection I have sticking in the back of that. And I'm gonna show you the lens shift capabilities. There we go. 
Now, here's the cool thing about it. Now, here's the lens shift on this projector. You can see it right there, the zoom, and right there you can see there is lens shift. Let me see if I've got lens shift correctly on here. Uh, zoom, 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 there's the lens shift right here. So, bottom line, all I have to do is hit this, and that will pop up in the middle of my screen, and I can actually jerk my screen all the way up onto the ceiling if I want. So I can put it up on the ceiling if I choose. This is how amazing the lens shift on this projector is. Usually most projectors can't push that far up. So when I first turned it on, it was this. I was thinking, ah, oh, that is going to suck. So I'm thinking now I got to adjust where I'm going to put it at. No, 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 not with this technology. I can stick it anywhere I want on the wall. There was no position, I just stuck it on the wall. And if I want to adjust it where I need it to go, let me see, hit my lens shift again, and bring it down. Is that cool or freaking what? Yeah, it was definitely worth the money. It was definitely worth the money. If this thing was $1,000, I would have still paid it. If it was actually four grand, I would have paid for it. Yeah. To be able to do that, yes. All right, so let me adjust this a little better. So go back in here and hit my lens shift again. Let me see. Bring it up a little bit. Come on. Here we go. Let's bring it over. Okay, lens shift is godsend. I'm telling you. I can't see. All I gotta do is adjust my feet a little better up here. But that's face about it. But I really can't see myself. Woo! After you get used to being hit in the face over and over again with a couple 4,000 projectors, 5,000 isn't that bad, but good God, man, it does hurt from time to time. So let me see what I gotta do here. So, because this is tilted just a little bit, I'm going to bring it down some. It's got a little bit of a tilt in there somewhere. So, let me see. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. There's a tilt, tilt right there. So, let me see. It wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be. Bring that topic up to begin with. Why in the world, Andy, or well, Andy's blocked? Would you bring that topic up about Barry and Hatchet? Come on now. Uh, first thing first, you mind our own business over here. We don't really give a rat's behind about what he makes when he designs. I told you, I got a really busy, I'm a very busy person. I have multiple contracts in my company. We don't care about what he makes over there. But he feels the need to constantly do these dumb demonstrations against my product. All right, so you you know we design black technology. That's what we're into. You can't mind your business on it. You want to keep sticking your nose and saying our product is too dark. People can't see it. This, that, and the other. And now we got enough people to have our product that's in circulation with it. That's testimony about it. Now you basically um, you want to you want to do these just UV paint nonsense by saying that our technologies are the same. No, they're not the same. What are you talking about? You don't do any of the demonstrations we do. You haven't even done any of our challenges yet. We got challenges out there that have never been met. Never. But you want to come in with this dumb nonsense over and over again. So, you want to play that kind of game? I'll jump in your backyard. I told you, I'll jump in your backyard. I'll take the very same technology you develop and I'll make it better. And that's what I did. You're going to leave well enough alone. I have no interest in great technology. Not at all. Not at all. No interest at all whatsoever. I had no interest in it. Now I'm in that field now. We're doing both. Might as well do them all. Might as well do black, gray, whatever we can put or get our hands on. Might as well do them all now. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do them all. All of them. We may bring out an advanced silver screen. We're going to do all of them. Now, we don't care about your this, that, and the other. I couldn't care about the reviews that you do against us. It doesn't take any money. It doesn't take any bread off my table. I still get orders that come in. I got orders that came in on my birthday. Whew. Blessing, 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 blessing. God bless me. Always make sure he has, I have what I need. You can't take anything from a Christian. You can't. 
You can't take anything from them. You try, but you can't take anything from them. What God has given to me, God has given to me. And that's all to it. No man can take it from you. That's how it works. All right, we got that focusing right. I'll put that in there from time to time. But like I said, it just irritates me when somebody says something like that. With all the craziness I've seen this guy do. But like I said, it, it, we got lawyers involved in that now. So it's too late for that. I can't even do anything if I wanted to. All right. Um, this is a real control. Oh, that's another. I told you I had a million things in high places. I love this, man. I didn't think I was going to be able to mount this projector because it was so freaking big. Like, oh, my goodness. I'm going to mount this thing. It's going to rip off from the wall. It's going to hit the ground. It's going to get trashed. You know what I mean? But I always ask the Lord on how to do things. And he's going to give me the blueprints on how to basically build that stand up there. And since it's lens shift, I really don't have to do anything with it. Now, I suggest the screen a little better. So we're going to hit that lens shift again. Because I just had to get it even off a little bit at the top a little bit. So let's hit that lens shift. Shame I can't get a PS5 to go, come up on here. But, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not whining and crying about it. Eventually, I'll get it. I found out today... That not only, okay, people, everybody who got pre-orders for the, um, for the uh, PS4 are not going to get their pre-orders on time. They're not. <laughs> They're delayed on them too, but they got delayed. Yeah, read about that one. They got delayed. People who actually got their hands on the pre-orders will not be getting the pre-orders at the launch date. That is messed up. That's really messed up. But, you know, it is what it is. It's not, you know, bottom line is the PS4 is still an amazing system. You know what I mean? It's not something you got to have it right away. I mean, I would like to have it, but hey, if you can't have it, you can't have it. You know what I mean? You just wait. We should be used to it by now. They do it to us every time they launch a new system, so we should be used to it. So I can play on my PS4. I'm pretty much happy enough playing on my PS4 until the system comes out, until something comes out, until they have one or something, whatever. Who knows? By the time I get it, they may have the VRs out already, which that's the part I want the most. To tell you the truth, honestly, I'm, I'm a huge PS4 fan. I like PS4, but the Xbox... X series wasn't really interested in getting that system until they showed Fable, and that's what did it. I'm probably going to be on the Xbox series more than the PS5 because of Fable alone. Just didn't really see anything in the lineup for the PS5 system that pretty much kind of, uh, pretty much, you know, I don't know, maybe do Google for it. I mean, I like the system and all. Like I said, I, I love the interface with the PS5 and all that, and I do love the VR systems and stuff. But as for um, as for uh, the game lineup, just don't it doesn't do it for me. I'll wait until they get some better games with it. But I'm still going to get the system but with the Fable. Oh man, I can't wait for that. You have no idea. I'm ex I'm excited for that. I freaking love Fable. All right, so today we got some interesting stuff coming in. You know my hallway lights are out, right? So the reason why I turned them off is because I'm gonna lead light my hallway with some nice soft glow lights. Not these right here, these are party lights. These are soft glow lights for basically for doing home interior. So I thought it'd be pretty nice to lead light the hallway with some soft white. So that's gonna be done today. Um, I'm going to have the, oh, oh, this is gonna be done today. The RK nuclear screen is gonna be done today. I got the nuclear symbols coming in, the neon glow in the dark, UV glue and the glow in the dark paint. All that's going to be done. Half of it's going to be done because I still got to finish from the base and I got to get the arcade stick for it. Um, what else? Oh, the theater room. So I told you the theater room, I removed the projector out of there because the projector was nice to hit up on top of the ceiling. But like I said, I have to have a Chromecast attached to the back of it and I have to have content running through it all the time. So what I'm doing, I bought a couple of those Starlight Gazer projectors to hit that black. And I'll show you that one. It's freaking insane. As a matter of fact, I can show you when I get done doing this. How it looks but it looks freaking insane so i'm gonna do multiple projectors and have them overlap each other to give a kind of a 3d kind of a display so that's gonna be pretty crazy and i'm going to run led lights in that area too right along the trim nice little soft glow of led lights there and uh, i think that's pretty much it on what we got planned for today on top of that i got orders to process so anyone who's ordered from us uh last couple of days um, I told you I had to wait in, to inline things or sync things with the driver because so the driver is the one that picks up all the orders. Um, I got to confirm for Thursday, so that's good. So um, the rest of my product comes in tomorrow. All those containers you see down there will be filled and done, packaged and ready to go. You'll be receiving tracking numbers today. So if anybody's interested in getting the paint, the screen paint, and we did an early launch on the uh, new paint so you would have it in time for the ship out date. Um, Today and tomorrow. Actually, no, 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 no. Can't do it tomorrow. It would have to be today. It would definitely have to be today. 
because Thursday is when the driver comes through and we don't process paint on the day that the driver comes through. So bottom line is it would have to be today in order for you to put your orders in for that. So that's why we launched uh, that particular, the black silver today. All right, so uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I wanted to do it. Cause yeah, because when she comes out, she takes and everything resets all over again. That's how we do it. Let's play something off here real quick. I'm really happy with all this. So what I'm going to have to do is, like I said, I don't want to keep going back up. And I'm curious because, yeah, because I'm where I'm standing at. I don't want to be sitting over top of this thing game. Not until I get a chance to trust it a little bit more. But it's up there pretty good. I mean, it's not going anywhere. But like I said, for me, I don't want something on the top of my head, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking I'm pretty good with that. And if I had a projector mounted to the ceiling that was going through the beams and all that stuff right there, the studs, I still would be a little freakish if I had it over top of me. But it'd be nice because then I can put my chair here, sit down, and I can play the whole gaming system here without it hitting my head. See where it's sitting right there? That just came out fantastic. That's why I like lens shift, man. I cannot live without lens shift. I had a friend of mine, I got him into um, Christie projectors. <laughs> he had a ViewSonic. And he said, man, this lens shift is freaking insane. I can put the projector anywhere and I can shift it right into place. Now, if this was a regular projector, I would have to slant the back of it, tilt it up like this. Then I would have to hit the screen on an angle. Then I have to tilt up a little bit more. I have to shift it back and forth so it could fit in there. And then I'd have to basically adjust the keystone, maybe some corner keystone to get it fit right that. But nope, with these, I can set it right up there, and it'll basically come down and hit the screen right there. Doesn't even hit the fan. You know how it doesn't hit the fan? You see the light coming up there, it doesn't even hit the fan. It just goes right there. Beautiful, love it. So that's good. So now over here, I have this second projector coming here that's gonna hit here. So I couldn't have a stand here. I was thinking about taking a bunch of crates or something and bio you know making it look really cool and putting it right here and then putting the projector on top but i was like no nah, i have to keep moving the projector back every time i wanted to put the projector here so this would make it easier because i can have my projector here hitting there and that projector would here and none of them would actually catch the shadow on one or the other and that's why i had to put this one high enough and that one's using lens shift so i could bring it slightly down where it doesn't interfere with that projector or the sand that's what I love about lens shift. Let's get something plain in here too. Let me get uh, let me get my phone, and um, but now, as in the fellow making the comment about burying the hatchet, we don't care. The bottom line, I'm gonna go about my business. I'm gonna finish doing some more research uh, on these uh, on something. Some other things we're working on. Um, as for doing any more testing against the UB Mix, it's pointless. We've already done what we need to do. The black screen pretty much matches it with no problem. Pulls contrast levels that a UB cannot even do to begin with because the screen's black. As for the technology we developed on the black silver, it, it produces much more brighter images than the UB Mix. It produces contrast levels as outdoor capabilities to produce images on low lumen projectors. It, it, it's pretty good all the way around, you know what I mean? And then we can blend, we can, we can blend the screen, we can match this technology. So, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, we match the technology of a DMP supernova. I can actually match a Seymour AV 1.3. I know the codes how to do it. Oh, doggies. Yeah, we can match pretty much any screen. We can match them. We can match the code to the screen. And I hate to say it, there's one company we actually did do. That's what got us in trouble to begin with. We're not got us in trouble and they just didn't like it too much. And intentionally done. So after this, we got no, I got no purpose to to test anything of his. I got all his products here. I told you before I left the other house, I paid somebody over in California to buy everything he had and ship it over here. It's in a storage unit. So we have this stuff here. If I wanted to basically do tests and demonstrations, I could have been done that a long time ago. It's pointless. You know what I mean? It's just pointless. It's not something I'm interested in. I'm interested in these other big companies on what they have and what they're doing. I would love to be to get my hands on a Slate 8 or a Slate 7 really badly. I really would like to test my technology against that. XY screens over in China. I've talked to a few people over there. They're going to be sending me samples over. I can't wait to test that out to see how it compares to our technology. That's the stuff I'm interested in, but I couldn't care less about some screen paint products. I really don't. It doesn't interest me. 
So as in burying the hatchet, there is no burying the hatchet at all. The bottom line is you mind your own business and I won't have to worry about basically advancing your technology and basically blowing out your own screen. So just, just mind your own business. That's all you have to do. Go make your product, deal with your customers, and that's it. Mind your own business. Try, stop trying to uh, use what I have as a way of trying to rise yourself up because I'll advance everything you have. I'll have in that storage unit and I'll make it far more better than what it is. So don't do that. Leave it alone. Just leave things alone. That's all. He minds his own business. He stays to himself. We don't care. That's all. I don't mind people doing side-by-side -side demonstrations against my product. I don't care. As long as you do it correctly and you do it the right way. As long as you don't cheat and cut corners and try to do things to make us look bad. That I don't like. So, you know, that's all to it. Do things right. I don't probably, like I said, I got no problem. I will send you down the black silver for free. Send it to you for free because I know what that stuff will do to your product. It'll blow out anything you have. And I'll send it down to you for free. Free charge. And I warned you, do not stick that stuff against your screen. You did it against the black screen. I don't even know why you even tried that one. I'm going to take some right now. Not to go on this, but I have no idea why you would think that you could ever compete with that 12. Are you crazy? That stuff is way beyond the 8. The 8 can't even touch a 12. It's the advanced model of that, of that version. 12 has everything on every screen we've ever probably ever designed embedded in 12s. No gray screen will ever match a 12. Not even the technology we developed. I can design the best gray screen on the face of the planet. It will never match a 12. 12, you've seen the bright levels on 12. 12s are so bright that they can blend into screens three times shader, three times lighter than their shade. That tells you something right there but can produce a contrast that other screens can't do. That's a powerful screen that can do that. 12s had the ability, even 8s, 8s could pull images outside on ultra short though projectors outside at six o'clock in the evening. Look at my live demonstration where you see me painting a screen on, painting a screen outside. Tell me how many demonstrations have you seen somebody paint a screen outside and not only show bright, beautiful colors, the screen can produce colors by showing off contrast levels. Star field demonstration. Like I said, one of the hardest ones to pull up outside. So you should know you're not in the same category. You know what I mean? Just just stick to where you you work at, where you're good at, and just stay there. Mind your own business. That's all. I don't care if you do side by side. Don't you do things right by the book. That's all. This whole calling me a scammer and all the other nonsense you've started and everything. That's why we got lawyers involved in this. Definition of character, my friend. Trying to damage the credibility of my name. That's why there's attorneys involved in that. That hatchet's not that hatchet can't be buried. As soon as we get some things situated, we're all gonna be sitting in court. Remember that demonstration where I painted that screen in? I'm advising my attorneys to have me paint a screen in the courtroom. To show that the technology does work. Also I have customer testimonies. So you better hope that screen don't pull up, but it will. The weird stuff that we do. <sighs> now we're, we're past burying the hatchet. As long as you just mind your own business and stay to yourself, that's all too. But we're going to stay in the gray field. I like that technology we developed. I'm kind of curious what else we could do with it. I'm really curious. We should have be to have all fields. And to tell you the truth, when I think about it, we should have all fields. Why shouldn't we? There's silver technology out there that bottom line is we should be able to advance on it. And I think I am. I am going to actually dabble in silver technology. I'm going to, I'm actually going to actually hit all four corners. Right now, we're just only interested in black technology. But now after seeing what we can do to a gray screen, I mean, why not? Why not develop a high tech uh, ultra 4K uh, silver 3D screen? That'd be freaking amazing, wouldn't it? That'd be really amazing. Oh, really cool. And I got ideas already popping my head on how to build and how to design it. Already got the blueprints in my head on how to make a high grade silver screen. If we got a gray screen to produce a contrast level outside and we know how to manipulate the, the uh, um, contrast levels out of a projector to produce those black images off another screen that actually does not have the contrast level to do so, we could probably embed that same technology into a, a silver screen. Ooh, I'm going to have to do some research on that one. Yeah, we definitely have to do some research on that one. That has to be done. All right, let's pull something up on here. 
Because now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about something. And on top of it, I'm looking at it right now. I got my light switches are sitting there hitting the screen. You see that? They got to be shortened. So I do have to shorten those. That's the only thing that's hitting my screen. You know, and the person who got these got extenders put on them, that's why. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to go in and just disconnect the extenders. That's what they did. Let's get something out of the video first. I'm going to disconnect these things right here because I don't need them. Or I do need them. Yeah, okay, okay. We're going to work on it. We're going to develop a high tech. 3D silver technology for 3D applications. Special effects, 3D applications, stuff like that. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna design one. Alright, so we're in we out of our backyard. Where are we at in this one? I think it's backyard in here. Is it right or was it wrong? I'm not judging by that. That is definitely downstairs in the kitchen. That's not the kitchen one. Let's try at it. There we go, we got it, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that right there. I'm gonna have to bring it, so I have to bring it by a 3D projector. BenQ makes good 3D projectors. I'll have to get one of those. Let me go up here and disconnect these things. I'm gonna do this while my fans on, but. interesting how it's the same level as the fan but it's not hitting the fan it's actually going under the fan and it's hitting the screen because the lens shift does that but I couldn't clear the uh the um those uh those tassels that we used to turn the lights on I'll turn the fan on and off but I don't need them anyway oh let's throw some lights up in here hit the battery power um you have to do that okay I can't turn that off oh yeah I still have to be used to that always make a difference that always going to switch this one is, I should mark these. That's what I should have, I should have marked it. Let's see. Knock screws over the floor. I got screws and stuff everywhere up here, man. There's screws everywhere up here. You know, it started off. When I was building the game room, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put one screen in here, 150 inch. I'm going to put it across here, right there. And I'm just going to put a chair in here. That was it. That was what the whole game room was going to be. Just freaking just a chair and a giant screen and some speakers. And then I got to think, I was like, you know what? I got this big open spot. I might do more with it. And this is where all this became to be. I mean, none of this was supposed to pop off. Like, I'm supposed to have a screen here and then an arcade screen here. And then now I'm building, I'm building this whole craziness over here. All that wasn't supposed to happen, but you know, a brain starts to take the thing like, what else can I do today? You know what I mean? Always wondering what I can get away with today, I can do today. There we go, there's some LED lights in there. There's blue in there. Blue LED lights. In the back of the screen, I got the chasers on it. I think these have the chasers on them. Any chasers? Let me see, the chasers on here. Yeah, chasers on there, like the movie time. I spin around. Do, 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 do. Got the chasers on here. He's also two sound activated. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Used to be a friend of mine. Yep, there. These are the ones, and they go slowly all the way around. Walk through the dance with the horse remaining. Feels good to get out of the rain. All right. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. That's freaking fun. All right, let's get those out of here. Oh, the, we had the LED light seats right here. They were going for like one quart with the screen paint. Uh, that sold out. So next month, we're going to have 10 in the shopping cart, and then we'll start that process all over again. I love these lights. So out to be. 
Okay, okay, let me get out of here real quick. Let me get out of here real quick. Right. I'm going to show you something out before the sun comes up. Man, I got so much stuff coming in today for doing neon lid lights. We're going to lid light a lot of stuff in the house. Oh, we got enough packing tape to get all that done. And then we get to finish this. This is going to be fun right here. Now, what's missing from this, I got bio stickers in here. I got the huge nuclear symbol signs. I bought this glow in the dark UV paint to make this look all glow like, you know, this whole freakish kind of nuclear glowing case. Oh, it's going to look sick. I'm running neon lights in the inside, soft glow, something to get like the screen's reflecting light back at it. Like, you know, you have the old arcade. The only thing I got to do with this next is I have to build a stand, the wooden stand, that's going to be able to hold the arcade stick. So the arcade stick I'm buying, a little jammy stick, arcade stick for my games. And I'm going to make this an arcade, like a holder for my stick. So imagine having a dashboard coming out from here like that with a big coin slot in the side of it. And I'm going to have two uh, wooden stands that will come up and they'll connect under that piece of cardboard. And that will actually hold the uh, physical um, joystick itself. So I can pull it out and I can play my games. I can put it back so like a joystick holder, but it'll look like it's part of the whole entire machine. That is going to be amazing. I can't wait to actually start getting the rest of that stuff in. So that'll be in the day. I'll show up the stickers that I'm getting. Also got some clear UV paint and I got some a green and yellow. The clear I'm going to be using to paint over the stickers. So the stickers will basically glow in the dark when they're being hit with the UV lights. So the whole case is going to light up. And keep in mind that when, you, when you're on an arcade, sound doesn't come behind it. So I'm actually putting, I'm ordering a sound bar with sub. So I'm going to put the sound bar right there at the bottom and the sub there in the corner so the sound is coming from here instead of behind me. So I actually went online and found some stuff on eBay. If you're selling, um, if you're selling Xbox games, I'll be buying from you because I'm looking for Xbox games. More of them. Um, GameCube I have coming in, still waiting on that, and uh, Dreamcast is coming in. So we're going to hook up the GameCube, the Xbox, Dreamcast, and all into this system right here. I gotta get myself a switch box for that. I'm happy that the projector is up there. I'm telling you, if God gives you blueprints on how to build something, he gives you blueprints on how to build something. It's not coming down. All right, um, what are we doing here? Oh, my switches, my switches. So I had to uh, mark my switches. Oh, which one's the switch? I'm pretty sure this is the light. Yep, I'm right, that's a light. So the center one is a light. Okay, so I know. I can remember my that in the back of my hand. That's lights right there. All right, so let's show you what we got going on in the ceiling. Uh, with the ceiling fan, I told you I led lighted everything in here. Just about. Yeah, led light everything up in here. These are easy to do. They're battery powered. So if anyone's asking, like, how in the heck? Is he freaking doing that? Air battery powered. So I only had to do like one side of it because once it spins, it all blends into one thing. Let's see if we can get the, what's this right here? Oh, the flash. So that came out pretty good. Yeah, so that right there is the battery power LED lights. And I have the, um, I have the uh, uh, battery pack actually resting on one of the fan blades. It's not that heavy. So I got some heavy Velcro and that's how it's sticking up there right now. The top looks like a UFO. Now I gotta get the cord. All I did is run the extension cord. I don't know where I, don't know where I run everything through here Wi Fi. I'm not running the cable here. I think I'm gonna do everything back here Wi Fi. Yeah, cool to know. Yeah, I everything in here Wi-Fi. I have these network cables right there, these big cables on there for the network cables, but I think I'm gonna run everything back here Wi-Fi. Might as well. I don't think I have anything back here. Let's see, PS4, PS5, PS5, PS4, Xbox, so I just gonna run off Wi-Fi. And since my office is in the next room over there, I mean really don't need any extenders because the connection's right there, right from there. Uh, as for the PC over here, I think I'm basically going to run a, a wireless network card. I think I have a wireless network card in the house somewhere. A low profile network card. So I'm going to wire that in there so I can make all everything in here. It's going to be just completely wireless in here. Unfortunately, the projector's going to be. But where they're connecting at, I don't think I'm going to have a problem at. This one's connected right next to an outlet right there. So 
I'll have to build actually wire management the daylights out of this and build some kind of conjunction box right there in the center so I can basically take all the cables. So I'm taking extenders from actually I have DVIs gonna be plugged back there, um, uh, PCs gonna be plugged back there, S video jack, all that's gonna be running out of there. And I'm gonna actually get extenders and hook that up to a separate box so I can plug everything in from there. But let's get something else besides the birds. Where's my phone? Nope, nope, that's not a phone. Over here. I'm glad that actually, that actually worked because I'm thinking like I'm trying to figure out how to mount the projector and then the screws. Be careful about buying screws off Amazon because I bought these screws off Amazon. Every last one of them was slightly bent. That sucks when you're trying to put screws in your wall and they're slightly bent. Vantage point of black technology, I'm telling you. That's why I said all the screens you watch me display, all these screens had to pass a thousand lumen tests. They all have to pass it. So if they can produce an image outside at 13, 12, 13 feet back on a thousand lumens, and here's a kick wall. I gotta do the Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z gameplay. I gotta do that on here. Yeah, I hope my game chair hurry up and gets here. I need my game chair really bad. And I have this game too. I have it on my PS4. Which I'm going to be downloading again tonight. I'm definitely playing this. So I got to order my Chromecast today. Because the pre-orders are for today. So I'll have it probably ship it out tomorrow. Can get ready to get it set up area for the PS4 to set up right here. So I don't have anything in here to set up the gaming systems. I'm definitely not sticking them over there because it's a radiator. So I'm going to have to build something behind here, like a little stand behind here that I can plug everything up into. So this screen right here, uh, this will require two cords, but like I said, if you're going to be painting a screen over 120 inch, it does require two cords. So that's about 187 to paint this screen. because I'm going to disconnect from here. I got another Chromecast around here, don't I, somewhere. Let me see. Where's the other one at? That one does one for the projector. Let me see. This one's for the projector. We got another one around here, somewhere. That's for the projector. Where's the other one at? Let me see. We got one in the kitchen. screen over top of my fireplace that I have set up that has the um this um that black silver um just trying to figure out exactly where in the world I put the other Chromecast because that's running for this one back there so that one's all set up that one's good to go let me turn up my lights here too my LED lights are running
done. And the models are just, um, you shut your lights off one quick. I'm up here, so I'm gonna let that run for a little bit. In order to basically uh, get over my fear of this thing falling down and crashing to the ground, I'm gonna leave it up here all, all, all day, just leave it up there all day. That's what I'm gonna do, you know. But it should be pretty good, like I said. And the screws in there are pretty long that I put in there on top of that. They were coated with epoxy, so it's not coming out any time soon at all, period. Keep in mind, when I move out of here, they're literally gonna have to cut that thing out of the wall. There we go. All right, and let's go downstairs. Right now, yeah, so this area right here, I'm a lead light. I'm actually gonna put the lead lights around here, 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 all around here. And I might run a few down here because it's always been dark. Even if I had lights on here, it's always been dark. So I might run some lead light strips down here. Nothing high, bright, maybe something like along the trim of this right here. And then basically have another set going under the railing. That's all I need, something like keep going nice. I want to try this whole place out. Oh, if I could, I would try this whole place out. This is where we're at right now. Today, that right there is our, um, our, um, that is, uh, the, um, black silver that's available now on the website. So I got that over top of the fireplace right there. So we're going to do something pretty cool there. We're going to turn this one off right now. Now, I'm probably going to do a bigger size, maybe a nice little portable, or I may be thinking about doing a picture frame. I might put a picture frame up there and coat it with the technology, something real classy. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Okay. Just for fun. But that's, uh, well, yeah, that's a really good idea. I'm going to put a frame around it, a nice frame around it, something that won't take away from my living room. And all this is going to change because right now, the gaming system and all that stuff is down here. All this stuff will be upstairs. I'll be connecting the Chromecast Echo, not Chromecast, as a Fire Stick um, Echo over there through that. When you can talk through the Amazon, because I got an Amazon account, I'll use it. And then I'll be pairing the uh, um, Alexis to it. So I bought this, but I disconnected it because it was freaking me out. Because every time I turn around, the thing was always listening. I'm listening. I bet you are. I bet you are. So we're going to fire this one up right now. For that clicking sound, that's it always adjusting, always adjusting. Automatically. Lens, these lenses are automatic, so they automatically adjust automatically. I don't have to go in and do none of that at all, period. That's why I like the Christie's. That's why I was buying so many of them. When I figured out what these things could do. Oh, I was 60 of these bad boys. I'm about to make it seven. Because there's another one that I want that I saw in there that they have. It's not, it has nothing to do with this, this particular model, but there's another one that I saw that I want. So, first things first. Let's disconnect what we got going on upstairs. Get that out. And then we'll put in, uh, let me see, let's come right here. And let's bring in this one right here. So usually, when I'm firing up the projector for these particular screens, I always have my low lumen projectors. We're going to use a 4000 lumen Christie on this one. I think this one's backyard. This is backyard. Show you the distance and where my projector sits. Hit that screen. This is the screen that was able to pull an image 
outside on a 190 degree viewing angle or only a thousand lumens at 13 feet back. I told you this screen had, even though it's great, it has the ability to pull black contrast. Something that gray screens are not supposed to have the ability to be able to do. So this product right now is, we call it mid-level, it's a mid-class level. Because it's a mid-class level, it's a lot cheaper than the other um, high-level screens. As I said before, we'll do it side-by-side -side later on today against the silver versus next to our black technology. And we've done this a few times, but we'll do it again. And this one goes for $89 a quart. Paints the screen size 100 to 120, 69. Two quarts, 140 with a sprayer, you can roll on, it requires no priming. Only surface you have to prime is fabric, and that's because you have to get it to absorb as much paint as possible before you put our product on to give it coat just with any of our products that requires it. You can coat it on anything you want, motorized projection screens, fixed paint projection screens, glass, wood, plastic, whatever you want. Drywall, doesn't make a difference, you can coat it over, no problem, no sanding required. Low VOC, eco-friendly and wash us off the basic hot water and soap, odor free. So easy, your kids can literally paint the screen for you. I'm not joking, I'm dead serious. They can paint the screen for you. So those of you who have been desiring a gray screen, here you go. You wanted a gray screen with contrast, there you go. Gray screen that can produce images on low lumen projectors without using any color, any no fading, no washout in a fully lit environment, there you go. This is the answer to sunbeam projectors where people had low entry level projectors of 900 lumens, 1000 lumens, and so forth. There you go. Now those of you who haven't seen a thousand new demonstration, I will be posting that at the bottom of the link so you can check it out for yourself. We'll do the pre-recorded and recorded um, live version. We're doing all dark contrasters only. There's no point in doing any form of uh, bright, colorful demonstration. It's, it's, a, it's a gray screen, it's gonna pull it. We gotta show contrast. Something the screen's not supposed to do. I thought it was really creaky right here.
I'm not even having that today. This town smells fantastic. There's a ground there also. So what is that again? You like what? You said I like that. You like that what? Keep in mind, this is a non, this is a neutral zone. We don't discuss politics here. If you want to discuss, you'll be blocked. Go to someplace else and do it. Oh, my setup. No, this is not a setup, man. This is a this is a test demonstration. Test demonstration. It's a demonstration. Those and there, these are setups. But yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I try to do that. I'm still working on right now on doing a um, a, a projection set, projection screen setup for like under like I'm trying to do it for under six hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Get a hundred dollar projector off eBay. Go buy myself a nice little $130 sound system, you know, just set up a nice little budget system and paint it with our, paint a screen out with our technology and just set up a nice little theater package. Well, not package, I can't do packages anymore. Keep forgetting, because of COVID, we can't ship out large items anymore. What a bummer, isn't it? Yep, but anyway, I'm um, just going to show how you can do it for under $600. You can have your own like a hundred inch screen. We can get a hundred twenty inch. But I'm gonna try to keep try to get a hundred twenty inch. But I'm gonna try a, if I can, I'll get a hundred inch screen. So hundred inch screen, soundbar, projector, and then we'll, we'll use this screen paint right here because it'll cost you eighty nine dollars. And then I'll put all the links at the bottom. Right, I got every in every everything from, and you can get it from there. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad I could help out. I really am. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, that's what I said. It's a it, the technology. We got technology right now. Like our black screens are $160. But you're showing technology that's outperforming four and five thousand dollar projection screens at hundred and sixty dollars. There is no technology on the planet that's black like that, that produces those images like that. And we could have easily gotten six, seven hundred dollars for it. We could have easily had a company come out and buy us out. But we decided to keep the price that everybody could afford it so they wouldn't have to go out and spend the money for these high-end overpriced projection screens that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I hate to say it and not to put that particular company down but if you look at screen innovations that screen isn't jet black it's gunmetal this is those these screens in here are black but this is considered these are considered to be our high-end screens the black screens the eclipse they're um they're high-end screens nines are high-end screens this is a mid-level screen for us so keep in mind you think about that you go to elite screens, a mid-level screen is the, um, they call it the, um, the Great Cinema 5D. That's the mid-level screens at Great Cinema 5D, um, the Great Cinema uh, uh, um, 5, 3D, whatever those screens, those are mid-level screens. Those screens would cost you $1,300, $1,400 for 100 inch. Where this mid-level screen would cost you $89, and you could do 100 inch to 120 inch, and it can produce images outside where their screens can't do it. And the, under our standards, under our technology, I'm not going to design a screen that's going to give you like, eh, and then design a screen that's going to give you that, that wow factor. You know what I mean? Even our mid-level screens are going to look insane compared to anything out there on the market. That's the whole purpose. So my mid-level screen can beat one of their top-end screens. See the point we're getting at here? So even if you do decide to go for a cheaper screen under our technology, you're still going to get the best. Well, like I said, that's the whole purpose, to bring something out that everybody can want. 
we want we don't want to bring out a screen that like it's a technology where I'm gonna make a change my video real quick. I don't want to bring out technology that basically oh we got this one playing again. I'm trying to find something else we can play here while I'm talking here. The whole object is to bring out technology that everybody can afford. That's why those black screens are $160. That's why it's the price that they are. I want this phone now. But anyway, um, even with our mid-level screens, they're so advanced, like I said, they can be top-end screens or mid-level screens. But it makes it so everybody can afford it. Which one is something that everybody can afford? We got a price range. Some people want the high-end screens. They can pay the $160. And you got some people who want the, um, the, um, the uh, mid-level screens, but they're not going to lose any picture quality. They're not going to lose contrast on a certain level. As you can see, it's not going to be to match the contrast level of a black screen, but the contrast levels are still going to be extremely good. Well, you're not going to miss anything. That's the whole purpose. And if you got that uh, 900 lumen or that 1200 lumen sunbeam projector that um, LG makes, the ultra short throw, some people are intimidated by the black screens. They think they don't have enough lumens to do so, when black screens can produce on a thousand lumens easily but they feel comfortable with the traditional gray. So this technology plays out perfectly because it puts you back to the traditional grays, but also too, you don't lose your contrast and you don't lose your color. That's why the color, when it's something we can design the colors where they're bright, they're beautiful, and you're not gonna miss much. And keep in mind, just because I'm using a 4,000 lumen Chrissy, we have tested this on 900 lumen, 800 lumens, 1,000 lumens. We tested on projectors that were manufactured in 1999 720p projectors that were so old that the HDMI converters wouldn't work with them. We had to run them off PC. So you can run anything off these projectors, even an, even improve the knockoff projector. This commercial creeps me the freak out. I don't know about you guys. Hold on. That commercial with the cats freaks me out. It really does. It freaks me out. It's freaking me out, man. You're freaking me out. Yeah, the knockoff projectors, yep. Yeah. It can improve a knockoff projector by a little bit, by a little bit, I'm just putting that way. But you're just better off just going out and just buying an older projector. You come out much better with an older projector under a technology than one of these projectors that are promising a bunch of bells and whistles that you're not even going to get to begin with. And we've done those demonstrations already. We've done a thousand lumen projector versus the 15,000 lumen projector I have upstairs, claiming to be 15,000 lumen. When the video ends, I'm going to put a description. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to put a description. I'm going to put it, um, I'm going to place it, um, two links into the description box. That will be the links that will direct you directly to the website where you can have a choice of picking out. You can, uh, we have one link for the one court and one link for the, um, for the two courts. We have about 4,000 each shopping cart. So we made sure we had enough. And I already got already uh, ordered uh, from Uline containers, just about everything I could possibly get my hands on. I spent about a couple grand on whatever I need to get in here because I want to make sure we get those tracking numbers out as fast as possible. I'm gonna have to do a bigger screen. So what I'm gonna look for it when I, when the next screen, because I'm gonna do demo screens on this fireplace. And what I want to do is I'm gonna go out on Amazon. I'm gonna try to find myself a nice, beautiful picture frame, something that look really nice on top of the fireplace. I'm gonna turn that into a screen. They sell you on. What they tell you? I 
that's why I noticed that when I was doing my research in screen paints, I didn't see a lot of companies doing demonstrations on low entry level projectors. Everybody was doing a high power projectors. And then a lot of the screen paints I saw on eBay, a lot of them weren't doing any form of uh, um, real demonstrations. Like they were just showing pictures of their items and that was basically about it. I thought that was a little bit disturbing right there. You're not, you're just showing me pictures. You're not showing me real video of, the, of, of it in action. And then the other ones I saw the, the test, just the tests weren't there. They were just painting the screens in a projected dark environment and raving on how good it looks. And they weren't doing those tests. I mean, you've seen in every demonstration where I bring out a screen paint, you see what we have to go through. We got to do the distance throw at 20 feet. We don't use 4,000 lumens. We use the 900 lumen, 800 lumen projectors to throw a distance throw. We have to take them outside. We have to show how the screen's going to react to other high performance screens, how it's going to react on ultra short throw. All that stuff has to be done. Those demonstrations have to be done. We have to bring it up on a large scale model so you can see exactly how it's going to look on a large scale model. I had this, actually, this was painted to a 100 inch screen before I coded it over to a black screen because I went on my, I'm, I'm a um, contrast. I'm a big fan of contrast. So all my screens in my game room had to be black. But we did it at 100 inches, took the pictures and everything, did the video demonstrations, did them live and everything, just showed the screen on a larger scale model than what you're seeing right here. So all those demonstrations have to be done. But when I watch these demonstrations, it's the same thing. They'll claim they'll have bring out a screen paint, they'll paint it on the wall or a few objects around the house, and then that's it. That's the end of it. That's the end of the demonstrations. Maybe a little light hit the screen, that's basically about it. No real demonstrations. So that's why when we do this demonstration, we do them live. We do all those crazy tests we have to do on them. We allow you to see everything live. Nothing's fake, nothing's hidden from you, not one thing. And you see me a few times when I've done demonstrations, I'll get irritated because the projector's sitting too close and I'll pull the projector back. I can't do this, I gotta pull the projector back even farther. Because I'm gonna see how far where I can get away with. Now, this screen was able to pull off an 800 lumen projector at 20 feet back, which means that projector sat right here and that screen set all the way back there near my camera was trying to eat at around 800 lumens. Nailed that screen and was able to produce an image. So you can go back and say, hey, if someone says, hey, what kind of tests you've done on that? You can go back and check all the videos you want to check through my archives and you can see all the demonstrations we've done on these screens. Hear you. And we were saying, oh, you have to have 4K. No, you don't have to have 4K. You don't have to have it. You can do it on a 720p projector. It looks just as amazing. Because the thing about it is, if the screen's having a problem struggling on 720p, it's not the projector, it's the screen because I'm not having a problem with it. I paint them on everything, man. Everything I can possibly get my hands on. Literally everything. Cardboard, contact paper, glass, vinyl. I even did a screen door one time. Bed sheets. It doesn't make a difference. This is what the technology is designed to do. It allows the customer to think outside the box. To allow him to be able to build and design any screen he wants to design. And he can code it with our technology and turn it into a high performance screen. Just like that. Ultra short though compatible. Just like that. Use it outside if you want to. That's what I love about this technology. Yesterday I sat there and I was watching. Um, I never get used to this stuff. I never get used to it. I was sitting here watching uh, on my birthday. I was watching uh, Hitman. And all this light was pouring through the windows. I just never get used to it. I never get used to the fact that I can come downstairs at 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock or, or 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock. And have my screen surrounded by windows and watch TV shows and movies and cartoons and all that stuff. Just never get used to it. Cause I'm just used to seeing demonstrations where everybody's shrouded in darkness all the time. This right here is my kitchen projection screen. This is made out of cardboard. Cardboard and contact paper. It's made out of United States Postal Service shipping boxes all taped together using frog tape. And then what I did was I actually covered the entire thing in contact paper. Because what happens is when you paint over a cardboard, cardboard will warp on you. It'll warp and bend. 
So I double plied it, everything put it together, two pieces of cardboard on each side to make sure it was strong enough. And then what I did was I covered it in contact paper. Now contact paper, the minute you put down something, becomes weatherproof, waterproof, because water can run right off of it, which means the paint won't cause it to buckle because it's protected by the contact paper. And what I did was I got a contact paper that would match my countertop so it wouldn't take anything away from my kitchen. It would blend in real nice. Then once I got it covered in counter, counter uh, um, got it all covered with the uh, countertop paper, or this uh, is say countertop paper, sorry about that. I took the frog tape and made a nice little, nice little edge around it, painted it in, peeled it off, and now I got a screen that actually matches my countertop in the kitchen using the ultra short throw, and the screen weighs next to nothing. It's hanging up there with actually duct tape. And I can sit there and watch the movies and in my kitchen and have fun. Now this screen is retired for right now because I'm not going, oh, there's my buddy right there, Mr. Squirrely. I got a bunch of squirrels I feed in my backyard. I'm actually going to start working on my squirrel sanctuary. Pretty soon, I don't even use my backyard anymore. That right there is the screen I have on deck. That is the 126 inch screen sitting out there. And I go out there and I sit down and relax and go watch my movies out here. You know, it's a weatherproof paint. So I don't have to buy a special screen because it has to be weatherproof. I don't have to buy a special screen because it needs to be ultra short throw. It's going to work regardless on whatever you do with it. It's up to you on what you want to coat it on. I think, I forget what this, this, oh, this screen. Now the screen I got upstairs, I think it's a 79 inch, I want a 79 inch portrait screen. That's in my office. That's what I have. That one right there was, I used a bed sheet to make that screen. I think this one was a bed sheet too. Paint roller. You use the paint roller. That's why this version right here, if you go and you look like the spray on version, the spray on version is two versions of this technology. One's a spray on, one's a roll on. The spray on will allow you to be able to spray it on plexiglass and do front and rear projection. The roll-on will not allow you to do that. But, like I said, they both have the ability to be able to do use with ultra short throw projectors and they can be used outside with low lumen projectors and so forth. Just one has the ability to be able to allow you to look through the screen and make it front and rear. This technology is a roll-on application, which means you can actually use it with a paint roller or a paint sprayer, it's up to you. We made it a roll-on version because, like I said, I'll get emails from time to time when people say, hey, look, I like the gray screen, but it's spray-on and I'm a little intimidated by a paint sprayer. I can understand that. When I first started using paint sprayers, I wasn't exactly all gun-ho and know how to use it because I was terrified of it because I was afraid, what if I spray out too, paint, too much paint? What if I'm standing too close to the screen? Stuff like that, you know what I mean? You don't want to mess it up. So we made a roll-on version to make it a lot more easier. So regular 9-inch nap roller, we need to apply. Ooh, kitty kitty. I might have to try to feed my cats. I don't actually have cats. Um, and there's two stray cats in the neighborhood that come in and I feed them. Which last night, I got an interesting visitor last night. I got a fox last night. Cameron picked it up. Cameron picked up a fox. I was about to go out say and say, our scientist said, what does a fox say? I don't think it would say anything back to me, but anyway. Yeah, and a fox. I was wondering what was going on. We had these lights out front. I had this one light out, a couple of lights out front for the, for the, for the lawn out front. And one of the lights kept getting knocked over. Like, who the freak is pulling out my lights? I'm thinking neighborhood kids are doing it, but neighbor, neighborhood kids don't do stuff like that around here. And then last night, I found out what was doing it. It's a fox. The fox was digging a hole. Someone was digging holes in that one area over there. But I don't put people, so they put traps and all. I don't put that kind of stuff out there. They were here before us, so man, you don't mess up anything on trash, nothing. Just digging a hole. And I think you eat the leftover cat food too. They'll leave leftover cat food out there for the cats. Oh yeah, you can apply it on. Don't use a paintbrush. Do not use a foam roller because they will mess the screen up. And do not paint it on stucco. And if you can basically run your fingers over and your fingers start to bounce off that wall, don't paint it.
And all this is being done off a 720p projector. I think this is a XGA, no WXGA. 720p projector. Uh, price tag for this projector was $100. Got it used off eBay. higher black level thing because I said before it's going to have the ability to be able to do um, bright levels it's a great screen I want to see contrast on it. that's what I have to see more of can't use that someone singing in the background got to be careful about that if you have certain videos with someone singing in the background it could be copyrighted music Wish we would get a commercial I want them deeper black though, what's going on? I'll put this on right here for the time being until I find something, some better contrast levels. And I played this song so much, I literally have that song stuck in my head now. Here we go. This, this right, this is dark enough. This will do it. This will do it. I'm looking for darker contrast level. Don Not that.
first. Yeah, switch back and forth so I can get rid of the um, commercials. Now, it works. Switch back right and forth. I don't want any political stuff here. Don't. Keep it neutral. Stop in today to get a sweet deal on your favorite beverages, including Red Bull and Monster. Black level. Let's do some football highlights too. For a minute. She had beautiful the blues are on this technology. Oh yeah, it's ambulance projection. Also, keep in mind, if it can produce an image um, outside, inside is a gatewalk. I think I'm gonna do it here, like I said, because that light right there, I might turn it on, it's a bit faulty with electricity. I have to have an electrician coming to look at it. Um, I'm gonna actually get some lighting here and maybe here. The demonstration I did outside, like I said. Doing that demonstration at six o'clock in the evening, on this technology, same screen, like I said, if it can produce an image out there inside, it doesn't make a difference. It's a capable for it. There's no real light coming out, out of, off the porch at all, period. Trust me. Now keep in mind, you can't count the windows right here and here because the light is coming this way. So that doesn't really affect the screen at all. And the light from the door, some of it's coming in, but like I said, if it was more of a brighter day, you would see more light grace the screen. The overhead light is the only thing that would have contact with the screen and the light over here, as you can see. Now that's why we do the demonstrations outside because most people when they do demonstrations showing off the screen trying to show that it could be ambient light rejection technology to open up the door they'll have two window, a couple windows behind the back of the screen I'm showing you that these do not affect the screen at all the screen's not taking any form of ambient light disruption from these two windows in the back but if someone were to do a video like this 
you would pretty much get the expression that the screen is ambient light rejection because you're watching all the light in the environment. You're just being fooled because, as I said before, this does not affect the, the screen at all. Maybe this bit of light right here, but not too much because, like I said, it's a cloudy day and the light would have to travel underneath this roof and then come off the side of this door, as you can see right here, and then it's going to go straight down here. It's going to bypass the screen. It's not going to make contact with it. The only light that would make contact with the screen would be the overhead light, and that's it. So that's why we do all the demonstrations outside, because there's no disruption of ambient light. There's no way in the world for the screen to get away from it. There's no walls. There's no ceiling to protect it. It has to be to take in all that light. So that's why I said when I see demonstrations like that, I know it's just basically, you know, the environment just made it look like there's a lot of light hitting the screen when there isn't at all. The reason why we can show up this demonstration because the screen already passed a thousand lumen test outside. So pretty much I can put it anywhere I want now and not be worried about it. I got my door open because I got packages coming in today. I'm not worrying about anybody taking anything off my porch. So sometimes they feel if there's nobody out there, they'll take the packages and stick them right back on the truck. And I got to wait a couple of days. There's cameras wrapped around the house. I don't know why you don't see them. Great big huge cameras everywhere in the house. We got cam three cameras here. I got two over here, one going that way, and in the back we got three cameras in the back. On the side of the house is roof cameras. So on the attic, where my attic is at, I have cameras up there too, so I can actually get that bird's eye view. Why so many cameras? Why not? Cameras came in handy last week because the woman this street is kind of weird the way they built it. It's a, it's like an everyday street, but it comes down on a curve. And then the light at the far end, there's no lights down here, it's dark. So there's only one light at the top of the street, that's it. This street is two-way. It's a street that comes around on a curve, and it's two-way. And it's only designed for one, it's not two cars can go up one side, no. It's only designed for one car. So sometimes cars go this way, and sometimes they go that way. So you have to be careful when you come around the corner, because you could slam into a vehicle. So what happened was a truck came past here, and this is probably a route where you do a lot of commercial property trucks come through. And somebody came in and clipped the neighbor across the streets, took her mirror clean off her car. Didn't even stop nothing. But the cameras caught the license plate of the vehicle that did it. Because before they had a little gripe about my cameras, but none of them were pointing in certain directions. But when her, her um, Mercedes got clipped like that, then she was happy to get that tape because that was probably good for the insurance company who getting her, her mirror back on her car. But he took it off. He took it off. <laughs> he took it off without mercy. He didn't even stop. I like the Chrissy's. I'm a big fan of Chrissy's projectors. I love Chrissy's. Chrissy's aren't expensive. Like I said, you can get them for a really good price. Um, this one right here, this is a Chrissy. All my projectors now in the house are Chrissy's. That's a Chrissy. That's a 1080p Chrissy. I paid about $230 for this one right here. Has lens shift capabilities right in there. That right there is a short throw Chrissy right I have in here. Another one right in there. That's a short throw Chrissy. Um, this one right here cost me a hundred bucks. And then I bought another one, which is an L, that's an LW400. I bought another LW400 here. That one cost me a hundred dollars. Well, that's good. You have an ultra short throw 4K. That's good for you. I've already had 4K. I have customers that actually have the P1, but I'm not interested in P1. I only use Christie's over here. Now I have Sony's. I have just about everything else, but after we actually did that demonstration of displaying our technology, a 4K projector versus 720p, and we were able actually to blend that screen, I'm really not interested in 4Ks anymore. Right. Yeah, nice projector. I also have a 505 Christie upstairs. They're worth eight grand. Now, keep in mind, when I tell people about projectors, you have your top tiers. Your top tier projectors are Ronco, Chrissy, and Barco. You ever heard of those projectors? Those are the top tiers. Those are the top projectors right there. That's when you start getting to projectors that are going to cost you 60, 70, 80,000, 200,000, a half a million dollar projectors. These are projectors they use at Walt Disney. They use them at concerts and shows and big events and stuff like that. Those are top tier projectors. Lance, for those projectors would cost you probably about the same price you paid for your projector. Literally, I'm dead serious, not joking with you. You see those filters on the side of that projector right there? They would cost $100 to replace those filters on those projectors right here. My lamp is not that bad. My lamp only cost me $160 to replace. I've seen much worse than that. 
The projector I have upstairs, which is a 505, has picture in picture, which means I can actually switch my pictures back and forth. It has automatic lens shift. Everything on the projector is completely automatic. I don't have to touch anything on it. Just play with the remote control back and forth. That's basically about it. And that projector is 5,000 lumens. I think uh, 1920 by 1200. But like I said, Christie's are top tiers. Now, keep in mind, you probably paid about what? About three, three thousand dollars for your projector, maybe thirty-five hundred. A Chrissy projector at thirty at, at around um, thirty-six hundred lumens, around thirty-six hundred lumens. At they don't tell you how much the, um, contrast is, but around thirty-six hundred ten eighty p ultra sure throw would cost you thirty-five hundred dollars. That's just for a ten eighty p. If you were to try to get an ultra sure throw four k in a Chrissy, then you're talking about ten to twelve thousand dollars. These projectors, when they first came out, they came out around in uh, 2012, they were between five and $6,000 a piece. And even for 720p, they run that much. Now, if you wanna get, I got lucky on this one. That projector in there is a sure throw Chrissy. That lens that sits in that projector is three grand. So with these projectors, you can't buy them in sure throw. They do have a few of them, but they're the high scale models in sure throw. They run around, they, they, the cheapest ones they have are about $60,000. Those are the cheapest ones they have. But if you were to get a Chrissy in this particular model, as in the LX400 or the LX LW400, someone would have to be able to change out the lens. Now, I know we're not talking about quick release where you can actually push a button and pull your lens out. They literally have to go inside the projector and they have to interchange the, um, the, uh, the lens. But not only that, that lens is actually motorized. So you'll hear it clicking every once in a while because the lens is constantly focusing to the screen. These projectors are incredible. So somebody, when I bought this projector over here, which I was quite shocked, this projector right here was supposed to be a regular um, um, uh, uh, um, mid-throw projector. But whoever had the projector changed out the lens to a short throw lens. So when I did the unboxing on eBay, when I did the unboxing, sorry, on eBay, on over here, I when I turned the projector on, I noticed that it filled up the entire room. The wall ceiling, everything. I'm like, wait a minute. I know this customer, did not, merchant, did not put an ultra short throw lens in here because in order to put that projector, that projector doesn't come that way. I got the same model here. It doesn't come that way. Somebody went in and professionally installed a short throw lens. Now, I don't know why you would sell a projector for $100 and the lens is worth three grand. That's what that lens is worth. It's sitting in that projector $3,000. But it's a short throw lens that they put in there. And uh, I'm still amazed over it. I'm still amazed. But what's crazy about it is... I passed up, I saw that projector three times on there and I passed up on it, I wasn't gonna buy it because it had a scratch over the side of it and I didn't want it. And uh, something said, you know what, it's just a hundred bucks, just buy it. So I buy it, turn that thing on and it's sure throw. So if I wanted to go out and get myself a Chrissy projector sure throw without somebody coming and doing a professional installment on the lens or spending three grand and then I have to pay somebody to install the lens into it we're talking about the, the only short though they have under a Christie that already has the lens already installed in, $60,000. And here's the thing. If you look under Christie, certain Christie projectors, people say, well, I've seen a Christie projector for around eight grand. I've seen it for nine grand. Um, uh, uh, so when you see a projector for eight, nine grand, you think it's not that big. Check the uh, shipping charge first before you buy that projector. And I'll tell you why. Because Christie's, when they get up around eight, nine grand, these are huge venue projectors. I'm not joking with you. They are huge. Like the size of mini refrigerators, huge. Because if you look at the freight charge at the bottom, and it'll say freight, it'll be a $300 freight charge. That's got to be a big projector. What projector you know is going to be coming through, it's going to be about the size of a cereal box that's going to cost you $300. That means when you bring that thing in here, it's probably going to be somewhere between maybe 20, 30, maybe 20 or 30 um, um, thousand lumens. You know, you're talking about a, a big projector. Where are you going to mount it at? Where are you going to put it at? You're not mounting that thing to the ceiling. You ever seen it? I saw a demonstration where a guy put a sofa and cutting it like this and then giving it to you. Hey, mount that to your ceiling. That's how big CRT projectors are. So this fellow is a big fan of these CRT projectors. And he does this professional installment where he installs this thing into his living room. They had to cut out the complete ceiling where the projector was coming in. And they had to install these insane 
But this thing came down on top of you. There was no such thing as basically calling the paramedics. Just go get a body bag. That thing would crush you on the way coming down. They were huge. So he had it installed. But keep in mind, these are this is a big projector. So if you look at a projector on a Chrissy and they want something like uh, six, seven, eight grand for it, the chances are it's a big projector. That's why I said always check that freight. If you got eight grand to spend, check that freight and see how much it's gonna cost you for shipping. If that guy is asking for three, four hundred dollars, that's a big projector coming through. You're gonna get that thing here, like where the freak I'm gonna put that at? Is that your couch? No, that's my projector. That's how big that thing's gonna be when it comes through. So that on that, and also to another thing too. If you see a lot, they have a lot of these high venue projectors going for cheap prices. Check and see how much the lamp is going to cost you because the lamp is a deal breaker. It can mean you basically never touching that projector ever again. So say, okay, for instance, I saw a barcode. Barcodes are crazy expensive projectors, okay? I saw a barcode for $250. That sounds too good to be true, right? A barcode at six and $700 goes for parts. That's how expensive barcodes are for parts. Not working, broken for parts. They go for six, seven hundred dollars. You might get one for four hundred bucks for parts. So I see a projector for two fifty. I'm thinking, hmm, I'm gonna buy this. I did a YouTube video on it. I'm gonna buy this. Should I pull the trigger on this projector? It's a good thing I didn't. Because I want to find out how much the lamps were gonna cost. The cheapest lamp I could get was five hundred dollars. That was the cheapest lamp, was five hundred. The rest of them were eight, nine hundred dollars. One was actually fifteen hundred dollars for the lamp. And then some of the things you gotta watch out for. When you're looking at these projectors is you have to look at the um the lens because if you get any other projector any other projector you can't pull the lens out these projectors you can change out the lenses i can change this lens to short throw ultra short throw i can put it on um extended long throw an extended long throw lens means and i have one i have two of them all right so say you got yourself a dedicated movie theater setup right and say your screen is all the way over there right this is your screen right there let's pretend that's your screen right now, if you get an everyday projector, when you pull that back, it's going to expand out and it's going to hit everything. It's going to hit the, the screen. It's going to hit everything. It's going to hit the, the, the chairs. It's just going to blow out. But you have these things called extended, uh, actually called extended throw. So what this thing does, it shoots a narrow, long uh, uh, image that will connect right to the screen and the outside surrounding area, it won't even touch. It just goes zip like a laser and fill like that little area right there. They use those for movie theater setups. Because if you get any other projector and you pull it back, that screen's going to expand and it's going to cover everything. But this is designed to basically shoot an image from a projector at a long distance and make, now, make a hit with the screen without basically expanding everything in the environment. Now, in order to use those projectors, is you have to be 18 feet back in order to get a 100-inch screen. That projector has that technology on it. When this projector fires off, it doesn't hit anything here or here. It just hits the screen, and that's it. A perfect image, and that screen right there fits right in there perfectly. If I take any other projector and pull it back, it's going to hit the walls, the ceilings, the chair, everything. That's what see, see, Now, see the interesting to that how that lens looks? That's a different lens on how it pulls out. It's a long, extended lens than this lens right here. This lens is a little different. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta see what it's gonna cost you. What's gonna cost you now? When I got the I looked at the barcode, barcode lenses can be pulled out. They can pull out the lenses on them. So I'm looking at this lens like, wait, it looks kind of funny. Like something looks weird about it. So I take the picture of it. I take it down to Photoshop, and I basically start cleaning up the pixels. I get a chance to look inside where the projector lens is sitting, and I just realized that I could see three screws in the back of that. That means somebody had pulled out the lens. And it never stated in, in the description of the projector that it didn't come with a lens. Because the lens was missing off that projector. But anybody else would have bought it, they would have never noticed there was no lens in that projector. And that lens would have cost you about four or five grand. The lens. So two fifty for the projector, five hundred dollars for the lamp, and about four to five grand for the lens. That's why I said you gotta check and see how much the parts are cost you. Another fellow, he was going to buy himself a, another Christie projector for a couple thousand dollars. And the guy said the only problem he had with it was the fact that the projector would come on and shut off. That's serious. That could be anything. That could be the motherboard acting up. Power supply. Anything can be going wrong with that. Nope. If you see a projector and you buy it and it says, oh, it has a crack in it. Do you have any idea how these chassis on these projectors are pretty well made? Do you know how hard you would have to drop a projector to crack it? Matter of fact, I got an old one downstairs. 
I'm gonna drop an old, no, 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 it's dangerous, dangerous. I forgot, there's mercury in them things. Anyway, I'm picking way up in another line. But, but, but these particular ones have very hard chassis right here compared to some of the other ones they have. These are well constructed. You'd really have to drop this thing from a good distance to crack the side of a projector. So if it has a crack in it, that means chances are the projector was dropped or something heavy was set on top of it, heavy enough to crack the chassis. And that means I wouldn't go near with a 10 foot pole because if it cracked that chassis, inside, anything inside of it could be damaged. You gotta check the lens of your projector when you buy them because the lens can be scratched. You can scratch right down the side of your lens. All that stuff you gotta look at. All that stuff you gotta look at. Because like I said, you'll have those problems, man. I'll tell you something, I paid five, I'll tell you right now, before we get into this demonstration real quick. I paid $500 for a projector, wanted to turn it on, and every last warning light went off on the projector. Freaking filter warning light went on, the lamp light warnings went on, over temperature, uh, overheating lamp went on. Yeah, nightmare. So it does happen from time to time. I've got some projectors that were pretty much, uh, but you gotta be careful what you're buying. And I met some good, good merchants. That's why anytime I find a merchant that I bought a projector from, I'll post a link at the bottom where you can get it from. Because instead of you trying to second guess where you get a good projector from, and since I already bought it, I put the link there for you. Now we're getting some light in here. See? Now we're getting some light in here. I'll just, I say about time, because that's God's choice. Now I'm happy. I like it better when we get a little light in here. If it's too, really, we're going to go down this road again today? Come on. Nope, we're not doing that. Neutral, neutral. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do that one. That gets the song stuck in my head. I was on freaking uh, PS4 playing. Oh, man, I love this game. I know I'm a little late on the gaming and all. Okay, sue me. All right. But I got into that World War Z. Oh, man, it's like Left 4 Dead on steroids. I was a huge fan of Left 4 Dead. I love that game so much, man. That's a really good zombie game. That's a really, really, really good zombie game. I mean, the hordes are coming out of nowhere, and then they got special infected. Yeah, I really like that game. It's really good. And it's like a whole bunch of random weapons you can get customized and all that stuff. Yeah, I like that game a lot. I think I'm going to go day and download maps. I got a friend of mine I play with, and I send her, like, uh, we, we buy games together. She'll find a good game, and she'll send me, like, money, and I'll send her games back, and I'll buy money. We do it back and forth, like, we'll, share, we'll send money through PayPal. I'm like, look, time this game today, you know, we'll share it with her. I send it co-op. Got extra uniforms and outfits and stuff like that. Here you go, some extra money. We'll do it back and forth. So that's one of my... my um, all time, uh, um, a real good friend of mine. As a matter of fact, she's a driver. <laughs> she's a driver that comes and picks up the package. She's a hardcore gamer. Oh, she's funny as I don't know what. That's the one that's going to be living here. Because I told you, I'm moving. I'm moving and I want to get a bigger house. She's going to be taking, I'm buying this house right here. I rent this house, but I'm buying this house. And um, I'm going to leave most of my stuff here. I'm not taking much with me, but that, the screens and, well, I'm taking my Christie's. My Christie's are mine. I'm taking, I love my Christie's. I'll probably leave it one Christie, but I'm leaving the screens, the movie chair, popcorn maker, all this stuff. Yeah, she can have it. I'm going to start all over again. So I got a master plan. What I want to do, I'm trying to figure out, actually, I should be, I'm going to cut see if I can contact Christie, the company, because I want to see if they have... What would be the price for an ultra short though 4K uh, laser projector? And if they do have 4K, I wonder if they have it in 8. If they have an 8, I'm buying it. Because they have some crazy, crazy projectors. Ooh, let's do TLC. No, 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 no. We do TOC, and we got to do some dark demonstrations too. Well, that's gonna be too easy because this is okay. But I'm gonna do something really, really hard. But we got to do, we got to do some movies. I got to do Tron. 
I gotta do Tron. I love doing Tron because Tron has this real dark contrast. I love doing Tron. Yeah, that's what I have to do. I'm gonna have to get myself a picture frame for this. I'm gonna get myself a picture frame, put it up here, and I'm gonna coat it with the um, with the black silver. That's what I'm gonna do. I need a five by, that's a pretty big frame. Maybe a four, well that's a four by five. But I want something bigger than that. But I'm gonna do a picture frame. Yeah, aren't you sure that 4K projectors are good? Um, is, it, is, it, is it laser? You have laser? We got laser, it's pretty cool. We got laser. You don't really need laser, but yeah. But I, for me, I'm a Chrissy fan. I love Chrissy projectors. I love Chrissy projectors. And I started off with ViewSonic. Well, actually, my first projector was a BenQ MS500. And then from there, I went from ViewSonic and then a little bit with Epson and stuff like that. No, we don't supply the material. We don't. Um, we just uh, ship out the paint. We used to supply the uh, oh, laser. That's nice. We used to su uh, supply the material, but because of the whole COVID and shortage and stuff like that, we just can't get that material anymore. But, you know, I did enough demonstrations showing you how you can you can paint anything you want. I mean, literally, that's a bed sheet up there. We coated bed sheets. But anything you could possibly think of. I like to shop through Amazon or eBay and some of the places like that, you know, find different materials. That photo drop that they use for basically for, for advertising, for advertising, for, for doing photos and stuff like that, photo shoots and stuff, you can use that. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, look, you know that uh, styrofoam that they use for insulating garages? It's a smooth styrofoam they make. They make it in seafoam green and they make it in purple. You can buy that and you can turn it into a projection screen. You get a styrofoam screen. They're fantastic to do. They're lightweight and very affordable. Let me get my charger over here. This area in here gets really bright really fast. Even without the overhead light, it gets very bright in here because of all the windows we have in here. Yeah, that's the problem. We can't ship overseas. We can't ship overseas due to COVID-19. Uh, PayPal has put restrictions in place where we can't process any orders overseas. If you have a cut, any, any, um, if you have anybody within the United States that could receive the order, we can ship it right from there. Um, and they would have to ship it to you. But because of the COVID, um, we can't ship outside the United States anymore.
Closer, as you can see. Oh, gaming on these things are insane. Big time gamers out there? Yep. Technology is insane for gamers. So imagine if this screen was 120 inches right here. Today I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hook my PS4 up there. We're gonna do some gaming right off the screen. I'll run my PS4 through here. Do Batman. That's a dark scene. I'm just looking for real dark movies. That's what I'm hunting for.
Okay, for gray screen, the technology has the ability to produce contrast levels on an amazing level. I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm very impressed by it. I never thought a gray screen would have that ability to do so, but it's doing it. Now the Chrissy behind me has a 2,000 to 1 contrast. That's it. It doesn't make a difference. Your contrast level is still not going to, you're not going to lose your contrast level because the screen's gray. Mortal Kombat has really, really dark contrast levels. This is another way for the Black Sword to display its contrast capabilities.
demonstrate the making of a good stunt vehicle, I'll be using these Lego Technic models. Not only are they built rugged and strong, but they're just bought Lego Tech. Built for real. We're looking for dark trailers. Anything that has dark contrast level, something you wouldn't see in this kind of environment with a gray screen. Bring us some super dark contrast levels. This is one of the darkest contrast levels I've seen by Sony. put in one couple of bright color demonstrations to see that the screen produces bright images which like I said is a cakewalk for the technology because I think some people are like I said they want the gray screens but they don't want to lose contrast they don't want to lose color and this is where this black silver technology has that ability show you with some nice beautiful colors along with that running to the uh, reptiles. Seems like it's fast. You know you hear that clicking sound? Every time this thing will adjust itself. So this video passes, um, finishes, um, check in the description uh, of the uh, video. Two links will be placed in there. One link is for the, how to get access to the one court, which is going for $89. Um, the other one and shipping is free. Uh, the other one is actually going for 142. That'll paint up to 150 inch screen. Uh, that is um, shipping is free also. Well, shipping is free on both of them. We ship them out free anyway. Now in that shopping cart, when you click on it, you can read at the bottom, there's a specification sheet on just about everything you need to know about the product, uh, what materials you can paint it on and so forth, uh, hours of use that it can be used outside, uh, wood projectors it's compatible with, stuff like that. Now what I'm going to do is later on today, because I don't like showing video, I like to show the videos to people of the gameplay, but I want you to see actual real gameplay. So later on I'll be coming and once I get my um, orders processed for today, um, I'll come in and show you some demonstrations with the PS4 hooked up to it, and we'll do some racing and stuff like that. But I'm going to have to get on Amazon and order me a picture frame, something big enough. I want something a little bit 
a little bit bigger like from here to here but i want a nice pretty fancy frame to go with it something that basically looks nice in the living room and i can watch movies off it from time to time oh the fireplace works too just to let you know so in the winter time i'll be watching some christmas specials off here i'm gonna get myself a nice lounge chair here and I'll watch some and drink some cocoa the fireplace burn and watch some christmas movies right over there I want to see, I know the skin tones are going to be good, but I have to see this for myself. I have to see that particular contrast level right there, and I have to see the skin tones, I have to see this. Yep, that's all I need to see, that's beautiful, that is beautiful. Now we'll do it side by side with this and the black technology. I've done this before. As I told you, the black screens do pull higher contrast levels. And it can pull the same bright levels as a screen that's twice as lighter than that screen itself. But this technology, like I said, and it does have something that one of the, the black screens can't do. Black screens can't go below a thousand lumens. These screens can go below a thousand lumens. These screens pick up on 600 lumens inside the house. Even though the specification says 800 lumens, they can pick up on six. And then some people will still like the traditional of the gray screen. So you can have the tradition of the gray screen without sacrificing contrast or color because you're afraid the screen's gonna wash out. But it's perfect, look at the, look at the colors. Boom, I love it. $89 people, enjoy. And that's for a 100 to 120 inch screen. And we've done these. We tested this already against the high end screens already. We did the demonstrations already. Be a 5,000 lumen DMP supernova that costs you 100 bucks. And this technology will cost you $89 for a screen that can pay the 100 inch to 120 inch. Off the shirt, so compatible. I love it. I freaking love it. I gotta go because the excitement is making me go a little crazy over here. I gotta go. I gotta get processing these orders and get them out the door. Um, so we'll start. Ooh, look at that. The angle game from there. But we gotta start getting this, these orders right here. So these are the orders that we're gonna be shipping out today. Um, if you're interested, this is the screen paint right here. If you're interested in the screen paint, it's gonna be on the website. I'll put the links at the bottom. Uh, anybody who places orders for the screen paint will be shipping out on Thursday. Uh, we will be, when, when, any orders that come in on Thursday will be processed for the next shipping date will probably be Saturday. All right. All right. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I'd like to thank you all for your time. I have to go. Let me get this screenshot again because, yeah, I'm not, I'm definitely going to put me a screen here. I know I have screens all over my house, but I'm going to do a picture frame, pretty picture frame, something to match the fireplace and everything. Excuse me. You know, I have it set up that way. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you all. I have to go. And God bless.